How do you avoid a monolith from becoming a big ball of mud? One aspect is coupling. While onion architecture and direction dependencies matters, in this video, I'm gonna focus on boundaries and how you're coupled between them. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So I mentioned onion architecture and direction of dependencies, and you may have seen this diagram before is that in the center, you have your domain. Outside of that, you have things like domain services. On top of that, you have application services. And on top of that, you have things like infrastructure, UI, tests, etc. Now, while dependencies and coupling matters in this sense, this is really showing this concept of the direction of dependencies, meaning the domain has no dependencies. Um, and then outward, it has a dependency on the domain and the application services have a dependency on the domain services and et cetera. Now, while I think this is really important, um, it's an interesting concept, I'm gonna share this for another video because really what I think is actually even more important than this in a large system, especially in a monolith, is actually how you couple between boundaries and what those boundaries are. So when I talk about boundaries and in my loosely coupled monolith project, which I'll have a link in the description, I talk about having defining boundaries. So your monolith just is in a big ball of mud. You have well-defined boundaries. And in my particular solution, I've defined boundaries of sales, shipping, and billing. Now these are distinct projects that have references that I'll show. Um, but what I'm really after here with the coupling is how are you communicating? We're doing in-process communication. So obviously sales is gonna be calling some method in shipping or billing, et cetera. There's gonna be some interactions. But how you do those interactions is, and how you reduce coupling is really the key to preventing a big ball of mud. So I'm in my loosely coupled monolith project and you can see how I've had these boundaries defined. I have a solution folder with a, a for billing with a billing project in it. This is just a class library and another class library called billing.contracts. This uh, project is important. Same thing for sales, that exact same structure, and the same thing for shipping. Now, the way these works in terms of references and how we're going to couple between everything is that billing will not take a reference to another what I call implementation project. It will not take a, a reference to sales or shipping. Rather, it will take a reference to things in the contract project. So visually, the way that you can think of this is that each one of these boundaries, within a boundary, you have implementation and con contracts. An implementation will only ever reference contracts from another boundary. That's the way this works. You may have contracts reference other contracts, but between boundaries, you're only gonna reference the contract project of another boundary. So as an example here, I'm in the place order handler. So I'm in my sales boundary, I'm in the sales project. And what this does is this takes a dependency on an I warehouse inventory. And it's using that interface here that gets injected to call a method called do all products have quantity on hand. Now I'm using an interface because it's uh, less coupling than a concrete class. And because this I uh, warehouse in inventory is going to live in, I'll go to the definition, this actually lives in the shipping.contracts project. So we, from shipping, what we're doing is we're providing an interface, which is a contract, and we're providing that to all the other boundaries. So all the other boundaries can inject this interface and the actual implementation of it, if I jump over here, is actually lives in shipping. So our place order handler, which is in sales, takes a dependency on that interface from the contracts project of another boundary, in this case, shipping. And then our implementation is actually in the implementation project for that boundary, shipping. Now, last piece of the puzzle here is in configure services, I have a, an extension method for each different boundary to basically register all their interfaces to their actual implementation. So that's where I'm doing it here, where I'm registering um, the iWarehouse inventory to the warehouse inventory implementation. So that's how ultimately when we resolve this in ASP.NET or ever using our Microsoft DI, we're actually gonna get the uh, implementation from shipping 
behind this interface. So one thing I don't see very often are the use of delegates. And delegates can also be treated as contracts similar to interfaces. And I think oftentimes they'd be much better served than creating interfaces that have really low cohesion and just become a dumping ground for methods for queries or data that you wanna get from another boundary or another service. So I'll use this test as an example here. And this is one kind of way that you can tell this is that I have this place order handler and for the iWarehouse inventory that we need, obviously I'm not gonna use the real imp implementation because I don't wanna hit the database or do whatever shipping was doing with this. So I end up creating my own fake and I make it do what ultimately I need it to do uh, for my particular test. But the problem here becomes if our implementation of this handler actually changes, maybe with our fake for this particular test, we've set this uh, up in a particular way, but maybe we haven't really implemented everything yet. And then ultimately our test fails along the road because our implementation changed because maybe no, we were calling do all products have quantity and then maybe we added some method in the future and the implementation changed that we were no longer calling this particular method. So again, if you look at this iWarehouse inventory, it doesn't, none of these methods um, relate to each other at all, none. So I wouldn't suspect that a dependency on one of them, um, like I would expect a dependency to need to call one method, not many methods uh, particularly of them. And behind the scenes, these probably likely have nothing other than maybe a database connection or database contacts uh, relevant to, to them. That's the only really cohesion they have uh, to each other uh, of these methods. So the one thing that you can do that I highly recommend and is I think uh, a far easier way of, especially with testing, is to create delegates. So what I've done here in this particular case is in contracts, I've actually created a static class and I've created delegate for this particular method of that interface. And what I can do then is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this implementation to show you how this works. It's instead of injecting this interface because all I really want guess what, is a function, which is the delegate. So instead, I'm gonna inject this delegate. Um, we'll call that do all products have quantity on hand. We'll get rid of our, um, our warehouse. And then rather, we can just call this function, which is what we were after. Then over in our test, instead of needing to pass in this fake or we created a mock or whatever the case may be, now, Oops, what I'm really doing is creating an implementation of that delegate to do what I wanna do specifically for this test. And then in registration for shipping, I will go to my configure services and I can do register that delegate by a transient and it was in the warehouse inventory query dot quantity on hand. Get required service. And then I'm basically just registering that delegate to resolve our implementation and point it to that particular method. So this is just a way I find that I think delegates are way underused for this purpose. And they're exactly that same thing. They're a contract. They're allowing other boundaries to either perform actions or return data. And it allows you to get a little bit more granular instead of creating essentially interfaces that become dumping grounds oftentimes for different types of queries. So to finally to go as far as we can with coupling is to go full blown messaging. And I've talked about this a lot in my loosely coupled monolith is exactly that, is loosely coupled via messaging. So instead of our contracts communicating like I just showed in process, is moving that out of process asynchronously via a message broker. So any particular one of our implementations can send a message to a message broker and then have a separate process, what I call the message processor, be connected to that message broker, receive those messages, and then basically dispatch those messages to the relevant boundary um, that needs to listen to it. So if it's a particular command, 
It will go to one particular handler in some specific boundaries implementation. If it's an event, it may get uh, dispatched to all the different boundaries or whatever one ultimately have the consumers that need to use it. But if you want to get in more into the loosely coupled aspects of this, I'll have a link in the description for my loosely coupled monolith. The key for me really is defining boundaries and then defining the contracts within those boundaries. And then having your dependencies be from implementation to the contracts of other boundaries. Don't directly reference the implementation from another boundary. Only expose the things that you want to expose per boundary and put those in your contracts project. If you want to go even farther, loosely couple via messaging, and you're still going to do the same thing here, you're going to put your messages in the contracts projects so that you can use those messages to send a command or to consume an event. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or thoughts, make sure to leave a comment. And please, again, subscribe if you haven't already for more videos on software architecture and design.